recently oxfam india came out with a report called the india discrimination report 2022 which uh, which obviously talked about and measured the discrimination against women and other classes of the society now we talk about discrimination a lot in uh, in in our academy and in di- discussions but we hardly ever find or see an objective measure of discrimination an objective metric of discrimination such uh, evidence of discrimination can be found uh, in if we measure the fallout of discrimination uh, for example let's say that uh, women are discriminated against what could be the fallout of it the fallout can be that women start uh, uh, stop taking up jobs women the contribution of women in the workforce decre- uh, decreases and even if there is some contribution there is a large wage gap between men and women this is a hypothesis and we need data to prove it Oxfam gives us just this data and there's a lot of data that we need to talk about in this video so let's get down to it my name is Ishan Fawzar and you are watching the upfront to begin with uh, uh, let me give you a small ba- brief of what uh, Oxfam is Oxfam is a national uh, non governmental organization NGO uh, and it produces uh, on a very frequent basis reports and indexes on different section different uh, development aspects and different uh, different data of the socio economic issues of the society of india and of other countries as well this time oxfam has come out with a report called the india discrimination report which talks about discrimination against various sections of the society uh, basically if we divide the report it's uh, there are three sections that it talks about first about the women of india secondly the so called schedule the so called lower caste that is the scheduled tribes and the scheduled uh, caste and the muslims so there are three sections that we need to talk about that this uh, report specifically talks about let's begin with women if we look at this video according to uh, oxfam when we talk about the 15 plus age population 53% of men are either self employed or are salaried employees whereas the same percentage for women is for women is around 23% which is less than half this number this this the, the this low number of women participation in the workforce is very alarming because it is lower than many countries such as south africa china russia brazil etc furthermore it also shows us a steep decline from year 2004 2005 in which the female contribution to the indian labor force was around 42.7% now it has come down to 23% which is a huge drop uh furthermore uh, we can argue one can argue that this ga- this this employment gap may not be due to gender or sex it may be due to skill set it may be due to education level the argument is that men are more employed because they are more educated and because they have better skill set than women now to but now to to counter this oxfam has clearly mentioned in in this report that the employment gap the employment gap is uh largely and due to, and by largely i mean 98% due to sex discrimination how do we come out with this uh, data now we come out with a oxfam what oxfam does is it measures all the other variables such as education skill set etc and it measures the contribution of these factors to the to the to the uh, result that is to the employment gap and through this analysis we find that 98% of the employment gap is due to sex dis- discrimination and all the other factors make just the two uh, rest 2% similarly it was also found that uh, employed men earned 2.5 times than that of women uh, more than 2.5 times and again it was found uh, that 83% of this gap of this wage gap is due to discrimination and we can easily see through this numbers that discrimination against women has led to both pay scale gaps as well as dwindling numbers of women uh, in the indian workforce and this is happening due to systemic discrimination uh, due to systemic discrimination of women in the society as well in the household and the myth of gender equality is far from observed oxfam in its report says and i quote the high degree of gender discrimination is best explained by the existence of a large segment of well qualified women not wanting to join the labor market because of household responsibilities or social status it it is the patriarchy that makes a large segment of women who are the same or even more qualified than men to stay outside employment
As like women, we see discrimination against the so-called lower castes of our country and it is time we talk about the STST discrimination that Oxfam talks about. According to the report, uh, the uh, the members of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes uh, communities of India earn, uh, uh, when we talk about the monthly average income, they earn rupees 5000 less than all the other, all the other castes or the other classes and Oxfam mentions that Although the uh, although these people are equally or even more educated than other castes, they are not they are they are paid less just because of discrimination and uh, a large sum a large a large uh, area a, a large part of this uh, wage gap is due to discrimination and not other factors. Similarly, when we talk about the Muslim population of India. If we talk about the urban Muslim population aged above 15 years, we see that the unemployment that 15 percent of these people of these Muslims are employed throughout the country, whereas the same figure for all the other religions for all the other classes is around 23.3 percent. Uh, so we can and and uh, Oxfam also says that 68 percent of this unemployment gap of this employment gap is due to specifically due to uh, religious discrimination against the Muslim population and this is happening right in front of our eyes and we don't even see it in fact if we talk if we look at the rural sec sector of the country in the first quarter of the pandemic the highest unemployment rate of about 16 17 percent what am was amongst the Muslim population and uh, no one ever talked about it the uh, unemployment rate was generally high but it was the highest amongst the Muslims of the country finally it should be and I should mention that all the data that I have produced and that Oxfam has re that I have reproduced and that Oxfam has produced comes from government data and if I have to name some it the data used is the 61st round of national sur national sample survey data on employment and unemployment 2004-2005 periodic labor force surveys uh, all India Debt and Investment Survey 1991, 2002 and 2012 and the NSSO data on social consumption, health uh, and others in for the year 2004, 2014 and 2017-18. So I just want to tell you that all of the data that was mentioned in this video was the analysis of official government data. Neither Oxfam nor I have uh, manifested these data, this data from uh, thin air. And, uh, in the end we can only say we can only say that uh, and we can only look at this data and we can see that the fangs of discrimination show themselves the uh, the, the uh, more brilliantly in the outcome of in the outcomes in the results of these data such as the employment gap such as the wage gap of women wage gap of uh, scheduled caste and other population wage, wage gap of muslims and other religions and these uh, this, these discrepancies show us that discrimination is far from over in our country and we need to uh, come out and burst our little bubbles as uh, Swami Vivekanand told us to do in the World Parliament of Religions in 1893. If you did like this video, do comment on it, do like our channel, do subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to receive regular updates on whenever we upload a new video. Thank you so much.